welcome to our week ending drinks coach. It's Friday, time to party this weekend. Drinks Coach UK on Twitter and Instagram, or Vine Sack on Twitter and Instagram for my private page. Um, I've decided to try something new. Uh, we're doing spirits today. Um, a very nice friend of mine, Nick Rogers, uh, sent me a box of stuff last week and he said, Look, you must be feeling terrible, it must be horrible. Um, you know, no work, blah, blah, blah. Um, let me send you a care package. And I thought, in return, I'll show you what was in the care package, which it was full of the most fantastic gear. Uh, and here we are. I'm going to show it to you. Um, we are talking about a brand, a rum brand today. Plantation. Plantation is a thing. It's a special thing. For those people that already go to bars, uh, like their cocktails, a little bit, you know, sort of like knowledgeable, um, or bartenders in, indeed. Most of them already are very familiar with this particular brand. Uh, I'm not sure how long it's been going. Um, I imagine since the mid 90s, possibly, mid, well, late 90s. Anyway, Alexandre Gabriel, French dude. Family's been making cognac since the turn of the last century. Very, very good cognac, I might add, called Ferrand, P. Ferrand. F-E-R-R-A-N-D. Um, he saw the writing on the wall um, much faster than anybody else did and realised that, apart from if you're in a hip-hop video, cognac isn't as popular as it used to be. We're not sitting at home deciding which restaurant we're going to go to for seven courses, a Cuban cigar, and a couple of Delamain XOs. We don't do that anymore. So um, certain fortuitous occurrences happened in his life. He was tra trading oak to, America, uh, to, to whiskey companies, you know, whiskey... Uh, distilleries have fi often finished their, their drinks, things like port barrels or whatever. And um, because of the recession, the credit crunch in 2008, um, a lot of the rum distilleries had barrels to sell him, but they wouldn't give it to him empty because if they took the bung out of the barrel, it would cost them eight nine thousand $9,000 in duty to the American administration. They'd rather he took the barrels whole. So suddenly he was collecting rum from all over the world. And boy, does he do a good job of it. And these drinks are just off the hook. Um, I wanted to show you the basic two uh, rums in his range and then a very a one that's very personal to me and then one special one at the end if we've got time. So this is a white rum. It's called Three Stars. And the reason why it's called Three Stars is it comes from the three star rum producing regions in the Caribbean. Jamaica, very spicy, very, very estuary, um, very strong flavoured rums. Barbados, really classic all-rounders down the middle. And Trinidad, um, a mixture of coffee and pot still, so fruity and tarry together. You mix all those together, bundle them all up, some with age and some not, put it through an activated charcoal, and you've got a white rum, but not as we know it, Jim. Um, so this is basically competing with Bacardi. It's a fiver more than Bacardi, if I'm honest but it's 10 times better. Absolutely amazing. If you like white rum and you use it in anything, if you like to make a mojito or a daiquiri, don't mess around with the other brands that you probably know. I'm not gonna diss them because they're all doing a very good job, I suppose, but this is the world's best white rum, no doubt. 24 quid or thereabouts. Next one, this is their dark rum. Now, if you're gonna try and sell rum into a bar, um, the bartender and the bar manager is going to say, yeah, well, it's all very well you giving me these 60, 70 pound single barrel releases. Um, yes, I can probably sell a few shots of that a month. But what am I going to do with the regular customers? So these are the drinks that they created at Plantation to just basically see what was on the market, what people wanted and just trump it, just double it, just make it better in every way. And this is designed to go with Coca-Cola. You've never drunk a rum like it on its own. It's got some wonderful butterscotchy, chocolatey, tarry caramel flavours. It's been double-aged, which I'll explain in a moment. Um, but this is an amazing drink. And again, don't drink Captain Morgan. Lambs I'm kind of into a little bit, but it, this is about five pounds more than Lambs Navy Rum. It's amazing. Just pour that into a glass, put some Coca-Cola, squeeze a lime on the top, and pretend you're making cocktails. Call them Cuba Libres. There we go. Basic white, basic dark, Two of the best rums you can buy on the market, bar none, anyway. Now, this one. Now, um, Alexandre Gabriel is, is an innovator, and he's a thinker, and um, he's also a real anorak when it comes to things like this, and his master blender. And he has a friend called David Wondrich, who is world famous as a drinks archaeologist, historian. Um, and what he tries to do in some cases is find old recipes for drinks and reverse engineer them. Triple sec, Cointreau, we know that. It goes into um, in margaritas, into all sorts of cocktails. Um, they reverse engineered to see how triple sec would have looked when it was first invented. So they make a triple sec, which is dark in colour. Tastes absolutely extraordinary. Um, for example, um, this is a drink which really epitomises what Plantation is all about. It's called Stiggins Fancy Pineapple Rum. It's allowed to be called rum in some countries, not in others. 
Um, and I've helped make this. It's made from rum from Barbados and Jamaica and a little bit of other things. But basically what they do is get pineapples. They tried 600 different pineapples before they started. They peel the pineapple, put the husks into the white rum, which they've already made. They put the flesh chopped up into a big muslin tea bag um, of these beautiful Victoria pineapples, which come from Mauritius and the Reunion Islands. And they're incredible sweet things. But they cost about five reach this big time. And they put the flesh into them. And then this is steeped for six weeks. This is distilled and then stored for six months. And they're mixed together to make this. One of the most exciting new spirits in the world in the last 10 years. Just, oh, I love this. Anyway, I was at Chateau Bonbonnet in Cognac last year in the summer on the hottest day in history. 46 and a half degrees it was under the gazebo and they were squirting water in our face while we, with gloves on, uh, tried to peel the pineapples out in the sunshine under a gazebo. Uh, we all just piled into the the chateau fountain at the end with um, inflatable flamingos and just drank this and had the most incredible party um it was an amazing place but this is party central this drink now when you drink this drink it smells of rum still it has all these complexities of different rums but then you had this hint of this wonderful almost sickly hint of of pineapple and then when you drink it it's rum 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 and at just at the end and a beautiful person comes on and goes kisses pineapple just at the end and it just tastes like the pineapple somehow locked in there the way to get the pineapple out is to make it into drinks and i'm going to show you how to spend your 36 pounds properly here's a glass it's got ice in i'm now going to chop up a lime there we go each half a lime produces about 20 mils of juice which is important which i'll explain in a minute Oof, making cocktails in a tiny little corner of a sofa here we are there's one Two. Now the rule is when you're making these kind of drinks is it's 50 mils of drink, 20 mils of sour, 10 mils of sugar. Whether it's a margarita or a daiquiri or any other associated drink, a gin sour, that always works. 50 mils, that's a double. 20 mils, that's like a whole lime. And 10 mils, that's like two bar spoons of sugar. Right, so lime is in there. Now we're going to put in the Stiggins fancy pineapple rum. That'll do it. What were you missing? Sugar. Well, I made this earlier. It takes two minutes. I just got a saucepan on the on the on the hob. 100 mils of water, 100 grams of sugar. This is called stock bartender syrup. If you use gom syrup bought from the supermarket, it's twice as strong. So be careful. Use less. We're going to put in 20 mils of that. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you make a daiquiri. It's as simple as that. Lime, rum, sugar. Ooh, a more ice in there. There we go. Well, I'm not going to piss about. We're not going to Hawthorne strain it or anything. I'm just going to pour it with the rocks straight into the glass. Garnish it with the lime if you want. <clears throat> Pineapples coming out of your ears, out of your nostrils. The rum still trundling along underneath. It's almost like sort of like a baseline. Extraordinary. Why do I even bother talking to you about wine? This stuff is much more interesting. Okay, finally, very, very, very quickly. This came out last week, and I want to show you this. Because pound for pound, this is probably the best spirit you can buy in the world. It's called Isle of Fiji Plantation Rum. I don't know how old it is. Probably four or five years old. 26 pounds. 26 pounds. Most people spend more money on vodka than that. A bottle of gin that takes two hours to make. 30 quid. 26 pounds. Remember I said that. Oh God, it's incredible. It smells of caramelized buttery bananas and toffee and butter toffee and baked fruit and guava and mango juice. Ugh. It's smoother than the most smooth cognac you can think of. I don't know what to say really. See you Monday.